Hey, I'm Derek, it's me, Derek, and welcome to Stop Skeletons and Fighting. For almost 15 years now, I have been playing and enjoying and loving Resident Evil 4. It's one of the best action games ever made. It's one of the most important action games ever made. And it's personally one of my favorite games. I've bought it numerous, numerous times, but only recently was I able to truly appreciate Resident Evil 4. Because of all the great things Resident Evil 4 gave to the world, it gave us the greatest controllers of all time. The chainsaw controllers. These are real. There's one for the GameCube. There's one for the PlayStation 2. And we're gonna break them down. We're gonna break them down here for you. It's Halloween time spooky. Ignore the fact that I'm wearing a Splatterhouse t-shirt and I'm talking about Resident Evil 4, but you know what? I'm doing my Biggie Man impression. I got two chainsaws, two chainsaws. Hopefully this gets up before Halloween. Listen, Halloween's in here, okay? It's up here. And that's what I wanna, that's, that's the important thing. Before jumping into the gory details, let's just do a quick overview. These two chainsaws are made by Newbie Tech, with Capcom, of course, in 2005. Now, these look like they would be part of an awesome pre-order campaign. These actually were not. Both of these versions of Resident Evil 4 had pre-orders, has cool uh, special edition pre-orders. These were sold separately for about 50 bucks. Uh, they are on eBay now for a little more than that. Probably the best thing the Newbie Tech ever did. They made a lot of controllers before and after this, but this is maybe the high point for them. You could buy these and not even know anything about Resident Evil 4, and I wouldn't blame you because it looks so cool. I want to give a shout out though. David was very generous and donated this chainsaw to us. Uh, we're borrowing this from a friend. All right, let's get into this. Let's start with the GameCube model because the GameCube version of Resident Evil 4 was the original. So let's start with this one. So first off, you got two handles. You can really grip this thing. Uh, I will say that it's very light. It's kind of hollow, but it really feels like a sturdy piece of machinery here. I feel like you can really manhandle this and it won't break. It feels really sturdy. So if you do buy one of these, it should probably be in good shape. The blood on every single one is different. I think a lot of them always have the fingerprints here because that's naturally where your fingers would go. But every single one of these, custom blood. Every single one has a number. There were 50,000 made. They'll have your number here at the bottom. 11,722 is this one. Let's talk about the buttons. Basically, this is the top of your, this would be the front of your GameCube controller. A, B, X, Y, start, C, D-pad, analog stick. Your L, R, and Z are located on the handles down here. So honestly, you're using the exact same fingers you would normally be playing if you were holding a GameCube controller. I feel like the Z button is the one thing that is kind of hard to hit, but that's not a huge deal for Resident Evil 4, but might be for other games. I want to get ahead of myself there. Really, this is a pretty sturdy, solid piece of machinery right here. This yellow model is based off of the burlap sack uh, male chainsaw variant. And to be fair, in the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Le Leatherface uses a yellow chainsaw. So the yellow variant is not only a reference to that particular enemy in Resident Evil 4, it's also a Texas Chainsaw Massacre reference. It originally did come with a big old case that made it easier for displaying. There's something about that case though. Inside the case is where they keep the cord that you need to actually plug this sucker in. So if you were gonna buy this controller and it does not come with the case, you might run into the problem that we did, uh, which is we had this controller. We had no cord. We could not use it. Now to be fair, without this cord, it'll still look good on your shelf. Nothing wrong with that. But if you actually want to experience this, you need to get this cord. It is just a male to male GameCube controller cord that plugs into the bottom of this and then into your GameCube. These cords don't exist anywhere outside of this controller. So if you were going to buy this, uh, make sure it has the cord. If it doesn't have the case, that's fine. Make sure it has the cord. I want to give a shout out to Edmonds, the greater Seattle area. Uh, another castle, our friend Tony hooked us up. I gave him a couple of GameCube controllers that were dying and he made this custom cord for my Resident Evil Chainsaw or my friend's Resident Evil Chainsaw. This, this is the new cord for Jason. There you go, buddy. But about this cord. So Newbie Tech promised in the lead up to this in a press release that it was going to have sound. And on the bottom of it, there is actually some space for sound, a little area, a little air, some air for sound to come out of. Why else would this be here? Controllers like this don't normally have a place where dust can easily get into it. I don't know if because this is a custom made controller that the audio just isn't coming through, but playing this with Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube, uh, no audio ever came out of this. It vibrated, and that's fun. It vibrates when you get shot, it vibrates when you shoot, but there was no sound that came out of it. I don't know if that's just the, the cord. There's space for a speaker inside here. I don't know anything about technical stuff. I don't think this makes any sound. I've looked up other people's videos. I haven't seen any videos of other people's GameCube 
Chainsaw's making noise, um, but maybe I'm wrong. So just a heads up. So you know Uncle Derek, he loves chainsaw controllers. Of course I do. Here's the secret. These chainsaw controllers, this GameCube chainsaw controller, is just a GameCube controller. It's just a fancy GameCube controller, which means you can play this with any game. And because of Super Smash Bros, the GameCube controller continues to exist. So if you have a Wii, you can play this with Wii games. If you have the Wii U converter for your Smash Bros that worked on Wii U and works on Switch, this is compatible with Resident Evil 4 on the Switch. Yes, the Switch port does not have motion compatibility, but it does have GameCube controller compatibility. But don't lose focus here. What this means is this thing throughout four Nintendo generations can work with any game that has GameCube controller compatibility. Any game that lets you use the GameCube controller, you, you, you can plug the chainsaw. Play Killer7 with a chainsaw. It's what Suda would want. Or go for my favorite, the stark contrast. Play something cute like Kirby's Air Ride with a blood-soaked chainsaw or Klonoa. And before you ask, no, it does not work with Mad World. Remember, it has to have GameCube controller support to begin with. But I was looking for a reason to play some more Castlevania Judgment. The game's not that bad, actually. Also, GoldenEye, the GoldenEye reboot, sure. Bring this to Evo. I want someone to bring this to Evo and do some Smash with this. I want somebody to whoop ass with this. Somebody has got to have done that. I mean, I can't be I can't be the only person. If somebody has actually taken this to Evo and like there's this footage of it, please let me know in the comments below. Because I cannot be the first person who thought to do this. So the red variant. Before making this video, I didn't even realize that these two versions were actually any different other than the red. It is a heavier model. We have reflective now. Um, and again, custom blood like last time. Hold on, actually, I need to uh, plug this in and show you. Here's one of the reasons. This is the better version. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna load a game. I better hit start. They mapped start to the pull cord. And also this thing is like 15 years old. It still works. It still works. That's amazing. Okay, shut up now. And just like the GameCube cord, it is a male to male PlayStation 2 controller cord. Oh, well, the PS2 cord barely fits in this case. It's a it's a tight fit. A wild grace appears. Again, thank you, David, for the complete, uh, this complete case here, man. It's awesome. Cord and the case and everything. So before making this video, uh, I didn't even realize that this variant was so different. You have the pull cord. You have a redesigned handle. This handle kind of swings down this way. I think it's a little more comfortable. I like the blade on this one. It's like oval shape. It's fat. Kind of reminds me of fat old Pikachu. Back when Pikachu was. This is this is this is the Pikachu's chainsaw Sona. And I guess this would be Raichu's chainsaw Sona or Charizard's chainsaw Sona. I don't know why I decided to bring a Pokemon and Resident Evil 4 together. But that's why you subscribe, right? <laughs> and technically, because this is red, uh, this chainsaw is modeled after the Chainsaw Sisters. So the yellow is the burlap chainsaw dude, and then the red is the Chainsaw Ladies. Oh, and of course, in Resident Evil 7, the chainsaw fight you have with Jack, uh, you both have the red and yellow uh, chainsaws yourselves. Nice, subtle reference there. Which means there is a Resident Evil protagonist that does use these chainsaws. Also, for the record, Leon never uses a chainsaw in Resident Evil 4. Video games are dumb. The one huge improvement this model has is the D-pad. If you will notice, the D-pad on the PlayStation version is tilted 45 degrees in the GameCube version. The one major problem I have with this is that the D-pad and the analog stick, uh, in order to go up, you kind of have to push to, uh, I guess, your right. But you hold the controller like this. This is how, that's how you hold it. This is how Leatherface was chasing people in the, in the woods. This is, this is how you hold a chainsaw, right? Moving is actually a little difficult. If you want to push up, move Leon forward, it's actually pushing this. It doesn't really make sense how you're pushing to your right to walk forward. Movement with the GameCube controller actually is kind of hard because of that. They fixed that with the PlayStation controller. It feels more natural to hold it with your hands like this and be able to walk forward. It just feels so much better. That being said though, uh, both these controllers, the way the handles are, these are not the most comfortable controllers. They're, you kind of have to reach with your fingers a little bit, especially with your left thumb to kind of get to the analog sticks and stuff like that. For some reason, start and selector up here. They should really be like down here, but maybe there just wasn't room for it. Oh, and I want to say thank you uh, to David. Check, check this out, 228 of 50,000. Damn. So 
drastically redesigned model. We have the pull cord, we have the better D-pad. Here's the big thing about this version. So you may have read that this has like motion controls and not really, but there's a switch at the bottom, turn that on and suddenly you have end motion technology. But all that is, is if you listen, there's like a weight knocking around inside there. What that basically is with end motion on, when you have the controller down, everything's fine. When you have the controller up and it clicks, it pushes the R1 button for you. So you can play the game like this, but then when it's time to shoot, you raise your chainsaw and then you can aim and then you can shoot. The problem is that the weight is really sensitive. You can't play this like resting on your lap. You really, it has to be completely vertical. Even if it's slightly horizontal, it'll click on and the R1 button and Leon will be aiming forever. So you kind of have to sit at the edge of your seat and play with the controller like completely vertical, which I, I actually kind of hurt my back after a while. I didn't think it was the most comfortable way to sit. But here's the great thing about this, just like with the GameCube controller. This is just a PlayStation 2 controller, which means that this is an R1 press to pull out your gun in a lot of games, any other Resident Evil game, any Silent Hill game, Grand Theft Auto, any game where R1 is an important button, guess what? You can use a chainsaw controller to really liven up, liven up your gaming experience. It works for any game. And of course, it don't stop there with a converter. You can plug this into your PlayStation 3 and you can play Resident Evil 5 with the chainsaw. Play Dark Souls with the chainsaw. Use that end motion tech. Swing your blade in real life and in the game. You can raise your stance by raising your chainsaw in Bushido Blade. Truly put your relationship to the test with Adventures of Cookie and Cream with a chainsaw. Or also, hey, play Lollipop Chainsaw with a chainsaw. Also, I think this thing lets you uh, hook up to your PC with a chainsaw on that. Listen, listen. Life is so short. Put these chainsaws on as many systems as you can and have some damn fun for once. That's what I'll be doing. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Uncle Derek. This is Stop Skeletons and Fighting. These chainsaw controllers are really, really cool. I highly recommend them. Thank you, David and uh, Jason for letting us borrow this. Enjoy our Frankenstein cord. <laughs> Welcome to the new outro. We got to do, I had to shoot a new outro uh, because for the first time in like five and a half years on our last video, we put up the wrong thank you credits for our Patreon supporters. So here's an extra long, slow scroll for all the people. So I'm sorry, it is the first time in like the five and a half years we've been doing this that we put up the uh, an old uh, thank yous crawl. So we have a new thank yous crawl here. This is the most recent thank yous crawl. Look at all of these names, all these people. We appreciate all of the people that have supported us over the years. And I also want to give a shout out one more time. At the beginning of the year, I was like, man, it'd be really cool if I had uh, some fun, ridiculous controllers. And I appreciate that I'm now able to do a video on these controllers. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, another romp. Another romp through Resident Evil 4, another romp through awesome controllers. And if you want to support Stop Skeletons from Fighting on Patreon, it is only a dollar. That gets you early access to videos. That gets you uh, to be in the chat room when we record our podcast. Uh, lets you vote on uh, new videos, new game club stuff, hang out in our Discord. It's only one dollar, but if you cannot support us because we know times are ridiculous and crazy right now, just tell a friend. When someone asks, what's the coolest, dumbest YouTube channel? You let them know it's Stop Skeletons and Fighting. Let them know it's Uncle Derek. It's Teresa Grace. It's uh, it's Launchpad the Hot Dog Gamer. Hey, bud. Yeah, he wants me to stop filming and finish this damn video so that I can go play with him. And I'm gonna go do that. Thanks so much for watching. Stay powerful, wear a mask, wash your hands. I'll see you next time.